On the agenda tonight, we're going back to 1999. We're going to be taking a look at Santana featuring Rob Thomas, and they're going to be performing Smooth. <laughs> Oh, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. As always, there's going to be a link in the description below if you guys want to click on that to watch it the whole way through without me interrupting it because I am going to be jumping into it probably about halfway. But let's get the guys up on screen and see how they get on. I'm just going to jump in here. This performance is so difficult to interrupt because of the thing that's just great about this song. I mean, it's such a great composition. The feel and the groove that we've got going on throughout because it's got such an offbeat quality to it, that syncopated sound of emphasizing between the beats. And it gives it that almost samba type feel to it. You want to get up and start dancing to it. And this is why it was such a monster hit and one of the most successful songs of all time, if not the most successful rock song, certainly it's been called, and that's the Billboard charts that have uh, ranked this in at number two of all time. So it just shows you how much it connects with the population 
everybody loves this song, or at least everybody feels like dancing because of the groove that is in there. And the thing that is responsible for that is the bass, the drums, the rhythm section. There's something that I always say in videos when we're looking at live performances, but just mentioning songs in general, that foundation is going to set you up. And if you've got a strong foundation, it means that everything else can then shine on top of that. And that is certainly the case that we've got here. When you're talking about Rob's vocal, it is exactly like the record. It's got all of the same expression in there. He's got that range that is baritone. He's not hitting high Cs constantly here, C5s. He's just in that baritone range, but he gets such expression in his voice. The playing by Santana on that record is so melodic to the point where when you think about this song, you can hear Santana's lines in your head, which means that they are slow enough to be repeated and slow enough to be remembered. And I mentioned it in an Adele video recently about singing and singing not very m many notes a second means that you can have an emotional response to those notes because they last for longer. Exactly the same with guitar. You'll find that all of the huge guitar solos and the songs that even have a prominent guitar riff in them, they aren't four or five or six or seven notes per second. They are slower than that. So you can start to remember them and sing them back in your head. You might even be able to sing them out vocally because there is such melody within that. So it's slow phrasing of guitar lines, but with melody, just a really great hook. And that's exactly what we get with Carlos's playing. Just great, memorable melody, not playing too fast. So just to jump into the feel of this song that is set up by the rhythm section, because the bass is focusing on the offbeats, which gives you that sensation of being lifted and that bounce that's in there makes you want to get up and dance. That's the whole point of it. Rhythm wise and chord wise, I think we've got an A minor down to an F, down to an E, probably E seventh. So we've got this. And rhythm-wise, the... Even... Like that. So that's our basic setup for the song. We also go over to a D minor. And that's an F down to an E again. minor again and I'm not going to be going through all the chords it's not an instructional video but that groove you can see where the strumming is happening going one and by the way downstrokes here are the beats in the bar so I'm going one two three four one two three four and that's on the beat that is straight Whereas here, we get the emphasis on the offbeat, and that's what the piano is emphasizing as well, but the bass is jumping in between the beats. That's what's going to give it this bounce, because the bass is such a prominent instrument. Bass just cuts through everything. The waveforms don't care. They will just go everywhere. And you'll know this if you've ever been next door to someone who's got a subwoofer, or just any kind of sub that is belting out those bass frequencies, you'll hear that above everything else. Or if you're watching a movie and you've got a sub, all the explosions and everything goes through the whole house. And once you turn that sub off, you can't hear it in other rooms. So that bass frequency is so prominent in a song, in a mix, that it's going to set how you feel about the song in the groove. That's exactly what we've got with this performance. So. When we're analyzing the downstrokes and the upstrokes, if we know that the downstrokes are on the beat, when I'm going like that, you can see all of those ups that I'm doing there. Up, 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 down, down, up, 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 down, like that. So I was going up, up, up a hell of a lot, which means that those are happening between are numbers, are beats that I mentioned before. And that's going to make you lifted rather than going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Now, hopefully you can start to hear how regimented that is. 
it's got no bounce to it. If if the song did go like that. You wouldn't feel like getting up because it's putting you in your seat the whole time. The off beats make you get out of your seat. Stomping your foot on the ground, the on beats is where your foot makes contact with the ground. The off beats are where it's in the air. It lifts you up and it makes you want to get up and dance. So it means that if we now, rather than going, we go, It's almost as if you do want to lift your arms when you're playing it because that's the feel it gives you just emphasizing between those numbers on the offbeats. Just to talk about this song in general, being a really strong composition, we haven't got a million chords going on, it's relatively straightforward, but it is all about the feel and the melody and just the way it's been written. It's something that Rob Thomas is a fantastic songwriter and <laughs> This is just proof of it being one of the biggest songs of all time. But he wrote it initially, or at least he just reworked a song that had already been written. And it was Santana who heard the demo of this song. And Rob initially wrote this with a mind to have George Michael sing it. And Rob Thomas being a great songwriter, it just means that he can have side projects where he's writing songs. And it just was the case here that he was just doing this demo. He sang on the demo as well. And Santana heard this and wanted Rob to sing on this song. So Santana wanted to release it, obviously with the guitar over the top with the lead sections, but it was Rob that maintained that lead vocal. Sometimes and more often than not, it's the case that a demo is made for a record label and then the artist is introduced to that song and then they get another singer to sing it or the artist themselves sings that particular song. But in this case, I mean, Santana just loved what Rob did with it. So they kept everything as it was. I think Rob did this in like three takes in the studio, but you can tell that live here, I've already said, it's exactly like the record. So he can just produce this great vocal performance. Just to mention about Santana's guitar, the lead guitar that's in there is absolutely a selling point of this song. It's not as if it's accidental or incidental <laughs> that it's so important because of the melody that Carlos just throws into his playing. And when I've said about having this, you know, all this, uh, I'll give you a bit of a reference point and I'll take off a little bit of the gain of volume on my guitar to roll off a bit of the gain which brings me to the point that Carlos just uses a lot of his guitar to get his tone and has a relatively simple setup. He's obviously playing his PRS here and his tone is one of those tones where you just know it straight away because it's that gainy, really thick tone. There's not any excessive reverb or delay on there. If any, it's just straight out of the amp. And it's that Mesa Boogie amp, uh, the snakeskin amp that he's been using for many, many years. Really simple setup. And that's a combo amp that he has on stage with him. But it, I mean, getting into the guitar and giving you that reference point of that A minor, when we're playing here, we've got this. And if I'm going, Just those notes and the way that he phrases it. In this live performance, I think originally, we've got, there's a little bend in there, a smooth bend, <laughs> pun intended, but this, and then playing it straight the second time, I think in this live performance, we've got this, he actually does a little hammer on there, So he's playing it a lot straighter than the record, which is gonna give it a slightly different sound. He also just dots in these throwaway lines, like that kind of thing. I think. I think it's at the end of the main melodic line, the lead line that we have in the intro and then throughout the song. But He's not overplaying. He just dots these little lines in there that are so cool and they're all melodic. They make sense. He knows exactly where to put these lead lines in to not detract from the song. 
And that's a really important point that Santana could be soloing all over the place, but he doesn't. He just obviously plays in the guitar solo. That's the main time where that guitar is going to shine, but he's constantly throwing in little lines. And because of that change down to the F and then down to the E seventh, it means that when we've got that here, that's where the change happens. So if we're going and going to the F, like that. So you get a really cool semitone flip down. If you want to, you can start taking the You can also start to play with that theme of taking it down to the natural minor there, A minor in here, and even. All that kind of stuff. But what's great about Carlos is that he doesn't overplay. He's not just hammering away at scales here. He's just throwing in really melodic lines. Santana really is one of those players that focuses on the guitar as a voice rather than an instrument. I mean, he's saying something with his lead guitar. He's giving it that conversational quality of questions and answers and just telling a story with where he goes on his guitar. And you really do get that impression that he's not just playing through scales. And there's a lot of technique in there as well. I mean, when he's kind of going... You know, he'll, just, he'll have a little uh, ascension up the fretboard, playing through these different phrases. He'll also play through some octaves. But what we'll do is we'll jump into a little bit of that at the end, but we'll get back into the video and we will watch it until the end and then we'll continue the analysis.
forget about it. And there we have it. I mean, what a band. Let's just mention that. The horn section as well. We've got everything on stage that we have on that original record, which is great because it means you get such a full sound. But when you've got musicians at this kind of level, it means that they can produce it live, but give you the energy of a live performance, which is <laughs> what you can see here. The crowd absolutely getting into it. And the fact that at the end, we have more of an extended version that turns into a half jam, really, just with Santana going off on it with his guitar. We've got the kind of unison bends and we're... I also love the way that Santana... He'll kind of not resolve and he'll have that... and just leave a note hanging there and then come back to a line, just to kind of finish it off. But he did have a little move. He did start to have a little go towards that natural minor, but that's what he does. He'll just throw that in now and again. He also throws in octaves so that he can now make a melody of that same note being repeated twice, by the way, the octave. Just the same note, like that. And you can move that up. If you want to, and that's something that Carlos does, just ascends, descends with that shape, just mixes it up because again, we're having the same note twice. We're not having lots of different notes. So it means that you can really start to lock into that melody. Something that stands out about Santana as a guitarist is that when you're listening to a song, once it's finished, you'll then start hearing some of the lead guitar lines in your head. And it's because they're so hooky, the melody that's in there, an example of it would be going, That kind of thing. And it just stays in there. The other thing that Santana does is pick more than you're expecting. So if we're taking a line like, or, that kind of thing, those little, just playing one note multiple times. It's something that doesn't happen a lot. A lot of guitarists just move from one note to the next, but he's always just adding little bits here and there, just keeping with the original melody, but... That kind of thing, just a slight variation on it. And it makes it interesting and more interesting because you've already heard that melody, but now you're getting a variation of that melody, just keeping the same theme, but just changing it by throwing in an extra hammer on, an extra pull off. So his playing is always gonna be interesting because he's taking these original lines and just editing them ever so slightly. And he'll... He'll... Same thing down in his minor pentatonic shape one position, but throwing in the that kind of thing. So really cool playing, of course, but just a super tight band here. Fantastically executed live, but just a great song. It's in there as the number two rock song of all time, but you would argue, is this rock? Is it Latin? <laughs> is it? I mean, something that Carlos has that ability to do is bridge that gap between sounding like a rock guitarist, but also having so many other styles of play, or at least things that then take you in a different direction with his playing because of the notes that he's choosing. So it's a great collaboration and one of those that you probably didn't see coming when it happened, but what a fantastic song and what a fantastic execution here of it live.
But thank you guys for requesting this video for me to take a look at and keep the suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.